Make giving a part of your holiday plans. Joy is one of those things that multiplies when shared. And it doesn't have to be nothing big, big. It can be a smile or dropping a coin in the Salvation Army pan or even sharing your home. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency is encouraging Jamaicans to take a child home this Christmas. Visit www.childprotection.gov.jm for more information. You know what I want to give you this Saturday? Some feel-good stories. Markets across the island are getting an upgrade and we have the details. Plus, a trip to the historic parish of St. Catherine and students pursue their dreams with the help of Petrojam. I'm Theodore Henry. You are watching Jamaica Magazine. Stay tuned. Food, a significant part of any holiday celebration. Shopping for food this holiday? Take a step into the nearest market and you may just be buying in style as the government is upgrading many of these shopping spaces. Watch this. It is a cultural paradox in the country of Bounty. The land's fruits, fresh and nutritious, sold within spaces, too many of which are eyesores. The Ministry of Local Government and Community Development is changing that, delivering market spaces that are as appealing as the produce they display. Most of our markets are in a deplorable condition. These markets are not conducive for vending or, or for persons to ply their trade. That is slowly changing. Repaired roofs, properly made stalls, improved flooring, ample parking and concessionaire shops are taking shape in markets across the island. It is the obligation of the government to ensure that we provide the necessary resources. The Market Rehabilitation Project farms part of government's drive for economic development. This is where producers and consumers connect directly as they haggle and hustle to make the sale or get the most pounds for their dollars. And in the midst, people talk, socialize and stock their food baskets with high quality local produce. It is a system worth preserving and maximizing to serve more of the population's needs. The concept of not just having a market that caters for ground provision and arbitrary use, to have a market that will also create other services in the same complex. Among the markets under repair is the Maypen facility in Carindon. It has been expanded with modernized sheds and containers to replace wood stalls. $3 million was also spent to renovate the once leaking roof. We recently did some work on the roof. Um, it used to leak very badly. And, and now, after the works, I'm now hearing from the vendors that it's good again. Where the people them sell the clothes, it used to leak. And the mayor got it fixed. They are comfortable right now because they are not waiting up no more. We are in the process of putting in a rainwater harvesting system, channeling the water into a used tank in the corner where we can use all of that water to clean the market. There's another area there that we intend to cover uh, and have it properly rendered, you know, so that the um, food vending can take place there as well. In Hanover, the Hopewell Market will be refurbished at a cost of $20 million. The entrance will get a facelift, while the roof, electrical system, plumbing, stalls, flooring and bathrooms will be repaired. In St. Andrew, the Stony Hill Market will face $30 million of refurbishing work. Users will soon have renovated bathrooms, an improved entrance, a better roof and concrete stalls. 
The Papine Market, also in St. Andrew, will be repaired after recent fire damage. A new Falmouth Market is being built at a cost of $300 million through a partnership with the Port Authority of Jamaica. And the Charles Garden Market in St. James will be refurbished at a cost of $15 million. Work has also started on the Port Maria Market in St. Mary with a budget of over $55 million and an April 2019 completion date. While those markets are being upgraded, others have already received their facelifts. Phase 1 of the Clarkstown Market in Trelawney, which includes a new transportation center, was recently completed. Phase 2 is now underway at a cost of $20 million. And if anybody is carrying their ackee to the Lindstedt Market these days, a $12 million investment means there should be no electrical short circuit taking place. When we spend the money to upgrade and to make the market into an acceptable position, I am going to challenge our vendors to utilize the markets once we have undertaken the necessary repairs. There are over 50 active markets in the country showcasing produce that are pound for pound among the best in the world. The local government ministry is ensuring that these facilities are of equally high standard. For some of us, the joy of the season couldn't be more evident. Happy or grateful hearts, faces wreathed in smiles, and a belly full of love washed by our specially fermented Christmas wine. Sorrel, the order of the day for us this time of the year. But did you know that sorrel is a flower from the hibiscus family? It's also known as red tea, roselle, or Sudanese tea. And while we here sip on this, Ponche de creme, as it is known in Trinidad and Tobago, and rum popo in Belize, an eggnog-like drink with its respective concoctions, is passed around the table in the spirit of the season. Sorrel, Ponche de creme, rum popo, sharing the taste of the season from the isle in the sun. <music> Now for a virtual road trip to the parish sprawled between St. Andrew and Clarendon. When you hear the names of places like Old Harbour, Spanish Town, Bogwalk, what is the one thing that they all have in common? They are in the parish of St. Catherine, and St. Catherine is my parish, it's my home, and it is also the home of Jamaica's first free black community, Sligoville, the third longest river, Rio Cobre, and some of the oldest bridges. The historic cast iron bridge is 81 feet long and 15 feet wide. It was built in 1801 and is said to be the oldest of its kind in the Western Hemisphere. Today we take a look at some of the things St. Catherine has to offer. So join us on our journey through this historic parish. Be a beach and the best beach, the best community. Fish them proper, everything that's good. Original fish you have over here, no bomb fish. We large, you hear? Extra large. We think shot over here, you hear? We 
we're in the farming district of Colbeck, visiting the Colbeck Castle. Though the castle is just in ruins, the walls still stand. So let's take a journey through it. The origins of Colbeck Castle are shrouded in mystery. There is very little reference to it in the early records, but it is believed to have been built at the end of the 17th century when Jamaica was seized by the British. Colbeck Castle is among the oldest plantation houses in Jamaica. Milton Poros, one already, two alright. That may not have been their exact words, but all were aboard this very station waiting to travel either east or west of the island via the old harbour train station. Today, this Georgian-style structure, though broken, still stands and the train still traverses its tracks, carrying Jamaica's precious commodity, bauxite. But that one shipment of bauxite moved from Old Harbour and passes through the historically shaped Spanish town, then onto the famous Aki Commerce area of Linstead. By now you would have probably figured out where we are. We are at the Flatbridge, and I read that the Flatbridge is sometimes called the 16 mile walk. Why you may ask? That's probably because in the 1700s, the 16 plantations surrounding the bog walk area had to send one in every 50 slaves to work on the river road. Before there was the highway, whenever the Rio Cobra overflowed its banks, motorists had to travel through Sligoville, the same Sligoville that was the first free black community in Jamaica. Sligoville is a community that is made up of some smaller communities. But Sligoville is the hub. Sligoville is the base where all, most of the historical activities took place. We are standing on one of the 30 acres of land that were distributed as free villages. That is once a house that is supposed to be using from that, those days. But what happened is that when, during slavery, the slave master would live up on the top part and below it, yeah, they have a little cultivation for the slaves. It has all the attributes of a house being used at that time. Because they have walked on dab and things like those. So it's one of the old time houses. Our journey today ends here in Riversdale, the home of the Natural Bridge. This area, we used to play pokinas, keep party, and stuff like that. We, 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 there's a cave that can lead you to about 20 miles, about 18 miles from here to a next district they call Carl. What is Pokina? These are, it, 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 it's like a card pack, mm -hmm. right? But it, it's a book, like a bingo book, mm -hmm. with all the, the, the cards on it. Like the, 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 the queen, the art, but it's a big book <laughs> where you use stone and mark it. And you pick, those card, pick that card pack. Mm -hmm. And when you pick that card pack, the number that come up, if you have it, just like bingo. So bingo is a newer version then of Pokina. Yeah, yeah. Well, the natural is a great place, as you can see. It's the eight wonders, and it's built out of strictly stones. No, no addition. It is just stone, so it's natural. It's just natural. So I'd like people to explore it, see what it's all about, and they can see it for themselves. One hundred and seventy-seven steps later, and we're finally back at the top. So, guys. What you've just seen is just a little bit of St. Catherine's history. The parish has a lot more to offer. So guess up, gear up, go on go the road now.
As much as virtual trips can be interesting, the real ones are even better. Trust me on this. Want to know more about interesting places to go in all parishes? Visit the JIS YouTube channel and search for Round the Bend. Carry your keys in your hand when approaching your car. This way you don't have to spend time fumbling through your bag or pocket to find them and can get inside easily without delay. Move to right in threes. Right turn. Move to left in threes. Squad will retire. Left turn. This is not training for the cadet corps. There is a new co-curricular club in schools, the Fire Wardens Club. The Jamaica Fire Brigade has embarked on a new initiative. It involves children and is being implemented in schools across the country. The initiative is similar to that of many other school-based co-curricular programs. The only difference? This club reinforces the importance of disaster preparedness, management and restoration. The main aim is to reduce the country's susceptibility to significant damage from natural and man-made disasters. Ready? Down! Up! What to do if you close our entire The program is now being implemented in schools across the country since its inception at institutions in St. Catherine in 2017. Welcome to Greater School Fire Warden's Club. What do you feel when you feel an earthquake? Things are shaking, yes. Things falling. Things falling, yes. And you are frightened too. When I showed you the video, yeah. did you see where the road split? I just saw cars going down into the between the Yes. We initially started with a quiz competition that went on to the primary schools. So we realized that we needed something a little more tangible where we can actually have the fire wardens club in the schools. The motto of the club is preparing today for disasters tomorrow. We are preparing these students so that Whenever there's a disaster, they will be ready to help within the schools, home, and churches. So we would teach them to be ready when there's an earthquake, so they would know the, 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 the procedure, they would know the drill. We prepare them to help their schoolmates if somebody got injured and need to be moved from one place to the other. If there's a fire, we also taught them about the bucket brigade. They can get some water. You might have known that there are times when children are trapped, children are also burnt in fires. Now, if these children were taught and have some idea of what to do, the possibility that they could have helped themselves. Within the schools, a teacher is assigned to the club and for that purpose is given the title of a superintendent. Our students are very enthusiastic about the club and they get involved in many different activities as it pertains to knowing and disseminating information about disasters and disaster mitigation. One of the best agents for information are children and parents respond to children. So when the children know certain things about how to manage disasters, what are some of the right things to do, they can help to inform their parents, and in turn, the parents will inform the community members to respond. And in a community like Portmore, where there are so many potential disasters waiting to happen, it is important that Greater Portmore, at the schools in Greater Portmore, know about Fire Wardens Club and become involved in it. Fire Wardens Clubites are also engaged in humanitarian activities visiting children's and nursing homes. I just love how they do things. You have to do them proper, and if you don't, 
do them proper, sometimes I get kicked out of the club. The firewarden's club is very fun and I get to do drills like fire safety, earthquake, tsunamis and fire drills because it helps us to blow out fires. The fire warden club teaches us to do a drill, teach us when you to do, to what to do when your clothes is on fire. Stop, drop, cover your face and roof. It's a great club to join and I love it because you have fun and it's helping your community and schools to, to raise disaster awareness. If someone's house is being flooded out, I can help them by doing check, take them out of the house and take out the good stuff like the birth, like the birth papers and the passports. Loss of life and property as a result of natural and man-made disasters should be minimized as the Fire Wardens Club expands and more children get involved. Up next, how Petrojam is fueling the dreams of students from communities surrounding the oil refinery. There was a time I thought that getting an education was out of my reach, until I realized that sometimes help comes when you least expect it. That was 17-year-old Malik White, now a sixth form student at Camperdown High School. Four years ago, he was not expected to graduate fifth form. Although one of the top GSAT students from Greenwich All Age, Malik struggled to make the transition to high school. I entered high school at close to 90% average and in grade seven, I was very far from that average. My poor performance was really due to my choice in friends. I chose those who could entertain me instead of those who would elevate me. When I started teaching Malik in grade 8, he was very distracted, a little bit lazy on the lazy side, and he was frequently absent from school. Not only was Malik's poor performance drawing the attention of school administrators, he was also at risk of losing funding for his education, which was being provided through a scholarship from Petrojam. I was at home one day in the summer, and my, my mother received a call from Mrs. Jagan from Pitcher Jam. She said they're thinking about suspending my scholarship for a year and if I didn't get my grades up, it would possibly be permanent. Top boy for Greenwich is... Since 2006, the Pitcher Jam GSAT scholarship program has been fueling the success of outstanding students. The scholarship program provides funding for tuition, books and other related expenses for the duration of the awardee's secondary school education. The program came out of an, an effort from, by Petrojam staff to give back to the community of which we are a part. The primary objective of this scholarship program is to make future leaders of our students. Since its inception, over 20 students from the Greenwich All Age and St. Andrew Primary Schools have been beneficiaries. The initiative provides assistance annually to the top performing boy and girl from each school. Petrojam has taken a multifaceted approach to ensure that these students thrive. We want to ensure that our students remain on the program, so Petrojam offers the Homework Centre program, where we have a trained teacher come in and sit with the students twice weekly. In addition to that, we provide mentors for our students and these mentors are, um, the staff volunteer their time to mentor the students. The organization believed in Malik's potential and wanted to see him succeed. They stepped in when they saw that he was having difficulties making the grade. It was more mandatory for me to attend the, the homework program because for the entire Grade 8 year, I didn't attend the Omar class at all. Malik was also matched with a mentor who could steer him in the right direction. 
Neil Scott is, to say a mentor, he would be understated. And as such, I believe in more calling him a godsend. I try to find out exactly what's going on with him, what's going on with the schoolwork, is he making the grade, uh, if there is any uh, lapse. You know, we try to see what we can do to ensure that that is resolved so he can uh, continue to do exactly what he wants to do. I had to let go of some of my friends because they were not at all influencing me positively. I ensured that anything that I could do to possibly better my grades, keep my scholarship, maintain the average I would have to do. Sacrifices had to be made and I made them. He started taking interest now in his work and in himself. Whenever he was going to be absent or um, from a class, he would let me know. And if he was absent, he would come and say, Miss, what did we do yesterday or what did we do at class? With his diligence and the support and guidance provided by Petrojam, Malik was able to retain his scholarship and in 2017 was named valedictorian of his graduating class. Petra Jam is a true believer in helping young people to achieve their fullest potential, providing financial, educational, and emotional support to help dreams become reality. The program really changed their life. They are exposed to another side of, of life. I would have never made it this far if not for the help of Petra Jam. Honestly, I can say on behalf of on behalf of all the recipients of this scholarship program. I believe now that I know how to address, improve, and question the world that I will enter. More than anything else, Petrojam has assured me that my future will be more vibrant than my present. I would love to be the doctor that found the cure for breast cancer. And if it weren't for Petrojam, then I probably would not have realized this passion that I had for this specific occupation. The following is brought to you by MOCA, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency with the kind support of NIA and USAID. <laughs> Criminal minds think they are cunning The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency have them running Your friend a show comes here yeah. Take time running Now we ready for the ops up, up, Drive up for your block, block, block. Step out now me block Side but take about your lap block, block. Pull up every lap No evidence to drop, drop. We put it in a cuff so now we have the underground Sin you say slam you better look out for me When you move corrupt better look out for me They say you get wet look out for me Look out for me Look out for me the proceeding was brought to you by MOCA, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency with the kind support of NIA and USAID. MOCA! MOCA! This is where I leave you for this edition of Jamaica Magazine. Want more? Stop over by our YouTube channel or the GIS website. You can also visit our social media pages and download the GIS app. I'm Theodore Henry. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.